Don't you hate those holiday car driver gift guides that include cars? You're not going to give anybody a car for a gift. You might give yourself one, but this is what you'll give someone else. Here are my top three suggestions for gifts for the person who drives. My number one pick, without even thinking, is getting somebody a dash cam. These are both novel and also useful. A dash cam records everything going on outside the car, all the time. That means capturing accident evidence, beautiful scenery on nice drives, and just weird stuff on the road that hopefully will make your gift recipient's social feed a little more interesting when they post it. At its most basic, a dash cam records everything out the windshield all the time on a card that continues until it's full and then it overwrites the oldest footage. Depending on the size of the card, you should have hours of driving at any given time. It's also an HD image, so you've got some clarity. It should also have a screen so you can view the footage and make adjustments easily. And it should have a bump sensor, allowing the camera to wake up when the car is parked if it detects that it's been run into or tampered with. Price range on a basic dash cam, up to $100, frequently a lot less. These can be quite cheap, almost stocking stuffers. Now, if you can spend a little more money, I'd recommend giving what is generally referred to as an advanced dash cam. These are more interesting, not terribly expensive. There's no bright line that defines what an advanced dash cam is, but some of the things I look for include 4K video. You can get that high in one of these. Why that's interesting is because later when you're looking at the footage, you can push in or zoom in on something and actually read, let's say, a license plate that maybe you can't on a basic dash cam. You're also going to have a choice of some interesting inward-facing cameras on these guys. And that's not solely dedicated to advanced dash cams, but they tend to be HD cameras on these that are looking in as well as high res looking out. That means you'll have a good interior camera, which is good if the person you're giving it to does ride share driving sometimes. So they blame everything but in why you life on somebody an email for tone card? Good luck. Remind them to make sure they let their passengers know that they're recording though, especially the audio part. You don't want to get them in trouble as part of your gift. Another thing to look for here is driver assistance. Some of these take their accelerometers as well as their image, process and make sense of it, and in real time can give the driver indications of maybe lane drift or if they're closing too fast on the car in front of them. It's pretty basic stuff compared to what automakers build into cars, but it's pretty good if you don't have a car that has those features already. Prices for an advanced dash cam, generally $100 to $250 should cover a lot of models. The last category of dash cams are connected dash cams. These are the latest models, and as the name says, they're connected. They've got their own built-in LTE modem, so they're connected to the internet via the cloud over cellular networks, just like a phone. Why do you want that? First of all, you can see what's going on at the car live when you're not at the car. The camera may give you an alert. Someone's tampering with me. You can then log in and view. You can do it without an alert, just anytime you want to. And these cameras can also allow you to view stored footage without having to sit in the car like a loser and use the tiny screen on the back. Also, these cameras are typically featuring advanced crash alert technology. Using their accelerometers, they can tell when a severe accident's happened. They may ping you via audio or screen, are you okay? And if you don't reply, then call 911, kind of like OnStar and other systems that your recipient's car may not have. That's a nice extra. Some of these even allow you to upload, if you wish, your own medical details into your account with the dash cam, and it will relay that information to 911 when it makes the call for you. Prices on these will generally range from $200 to maybe $500, but you got to roll in another cost, and that is the cost of the connection. There's a plan you have to pay for, unlike all other dash cams. It's like any other connected device. Now, if you don't want to give a dash cam because either your recipient's disinterested or you find it weird, consider a smart speaker for the car. We've become so accustomed now to calling out whatever we want, why not do that in the vehicle as well? And there's been a whole category of products growing up around that idea. Here's one from Amazon. This is an Alexa Echo speaker that is built for the car. It's a very different form factor than you'd find for one at home. It doesn't use its own speaker. It uses the one in your car via Bluetooth, and it doesn't use its own internet connection. It uses one through your phone. So you might ask, what does this thing do? They are a curious category. What they do have advantage-wise is a whole array of microphones. This one has eight, you might see there, allowing it to do a much better job of pulling voices out of the noise on the road. 
These also have the ability to be more focused than using voice in your phone, which you can always do. But these are dedicated to one thing and won't get trampled amongst other forms of audio or alerts. And these dedicated voice speakers for the car have the ability to throw something to your phone's screen when that's relevant, like navigation, when you ask it to take you somewhere. Take me to the nearest gas station. Head south on Paradise Drive toward Coke Road. But if you really want to blow away your recipient and change every drive they go on, you're going to get one of those. A new Android Auto CarPlay head unit. What a CarPlay or Android Auto head unit does is give them this. All the stuff they're doing on their phone while they drive, but in a way that is edited and reformed to be safe, non-distracting, and frankly more satisfying. You'll get your communications like messages and phone calls, music and podcasts, and your navigation all right here. And notice what's not here. The 99% of the other crap on your phone that shouldn't be on the screen while you're driving, either the phone or the dash. So this both edits as well as reformats what your recipient loves about their phone while driving, and it's a transformational experience. Now, after I've sold you on all the benefits, here's the downside. These things can be a bear to install, and your recipient very likely will not be the person to do it. You've got to be good at automotive electrics, know how to hook up all the wires. There's probably a dozen and a half back there that have to be connected. Then you've got to make it fit physically. You see this plastic part around here? That's a particular adapter you need to get called a dash kit that allows this uniform double din size unit to fit cleanly and neatly in the manufacturer's plastic dash. And this will be different for every car made. There's a dash kit out there for almost every car, but you got to find that. Do the wiring, make it all come together. In other words, this is probably an install that is going to be a bit of a headache. You may want to pay for that as part of your gifting, or at least know that someone's going to have to pay for it out of their own pocket once you give them this. Now, a couple of smart buyer's tips on these. Make sure you get a unit that is both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You don't choose on these like you do with a phone. Almost all of the units now support both platforms. That's important because the person you give it to may change phones one day and or they'll have people in the car who'd like to use the system as well and they may be a different platform. So always get one that is bicameral, if you will. Secondly, don't sweat the latest feature in these too much and that is wireless connectivity where your phone and the actual actual head unit can talk to each other without a cable. Sounds pretty slick, right? But it only works on certain phones with certain OS versions and certain head units. It's a little bit of a needle thread, and I also find that wireless is always jankier than a cable. And I think whoever gets this is going to want to plug their phone in anyway to charge most of the time. So go ahead and get one that requires a cabled phone. I don't find that to be a problem. Now, the last thing to bear in mind is, does your recipient have a really modern car? If they just recently bought it, it might already have CarPlay and Android Auto. That takes that off the list. And possibly have Smart Voice Assistant technology in it as well. That's why the dash cam remains my slam dunk favorite.